Good morning, friends. The guest speaker today is Dr. Joseph Maria Ribera from Barcelona, Spain. He'll be lecturing on adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia, advances in management. This webinar is brought to you from Mumbai Hematology Group. It is supported by Pfizer and, Man and Nirvin and managed by Perfect Square. I thank Dr. Antara Chaudhary and the team from Pfizer, Mr. Yash Kalpesh and team from Perfect Square, Executive Committee of Mumbai Hematology Group, our chief guest today, Dr. Ramaswamy NV from Kochi, our guest speaker, Dr. Joseph Maria Ribera from Barcelona, all of our discussants who are themselves eminent hematologists or hemato-oncologists, and you participants for sparing your Sunday morning. Uh, just to introduce our next weekend webinars, on Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time, we have Dr. Fahima Hassan speaking on diagnosis and management of DLBCL. And next Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. IST, we have myelodysplastic syndrome pitfalls for the clinicians by Dr. Samir Malinkari. Our discussions today have been put up alphabetically here. Just to introduce them very briefly, we have Dr. Abha Dube from Shelby Hospital, Ahmedabad. Dr. Abhishek Ranjan from Center of Blood Disorders, Ranchi. Dr. Ashwari Raj from Shelby Hospital, Ahmedabad. Dr. Anil Singh Ayram from Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Medical Sciences, Imphal. Dr. Ankit Batra from Cancer Research Institute, HIMS, SRHU, Dehradun. Dr. Avriti Baveja from same HIMS Institute, Dehradun. Dr. Dipti Rani Samanta from Acharya Harihar PGI Center for Cancer, Katak. Dr. Inmya Tanda from North Oklahoma General Hospital, Myanmar. Dr. Kamil Kumar Patel from Marengo Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad. Dr. Nakul Tikare from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar. Dr. Pritish Chandra Patra from IMS Sum Hospital, SOA University, Bhubaneswar. Dr. Priyanka Samal from same institute, Bhubaneswar. Dr. Rajan Yadav from GCRI and BJMS, Ahmedabad. Dr. Sekhar Datta from Bansal Hospital, Bhopal. Dr. Sanket Shah from HOC Vedanta, Ahmedabad. Dr. Saroj Panda from Sum Hospital, Bhubaneswar. Dr. Saurav Kumar Mishra from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar. Dr. Yi Moon Thant from North Okalam General and Teaching Hospital, Myanmar. Our guest speaker was our guest in person in Mumbai a couple of years ago. He is an authority on the subject of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, Dr. Joseph Maria Ribera from Barcelona. He is director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Unit at the Hospital University German Trials I. Pujol and head of the Clinical Hematology Department of the Catalan Institute of Oncology, also at HUGTP. He joined the Joseph Carreras Institute at its creation and participated in the process of creation of the acute lymphoblastic leukemia research group. He is professor of medicine at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. He teaches PG courses at the UAB, University of Barcelona, the Universidad International Managers, Paleo, and the Escalo National D. Senedad, as well as carries out other varied teaching duties. His work and the publications have made him well known internationally, and he is a member of the steering committee for the acute lymphoblastic leukemia of the European Leukemia Net and the European Working Group for Adult ALL. His research focuses on the study of new treatment approaches and prognostic factor in adult ALL, and he collaborates closely with the lymphoma research group in the study of therapy and prognosis in HIV-related lymphomas. He has authored or co-authored more than 500 publications and 100 book chapters on hematology, oncology, and internal medicine. And his lecture is entitled Adult ALL Advances in Management. 
Before we come to the lecture, it's a proud privilege to introduce our chief guest for the day, my friend, Dr. Ramaswamy N.V. He's MD, DNB Pediatrics, DM Clinical Hematology, Fellowship Adult Hematology. He's Senior Consultant Hematology and Bone Marrow Transplant at Esther Medicity Kochi. He's a hematologist, hemato-oncologist, transplant physician with over 25 years of clinical experience. He did observership in pediatric hemato-oncology and transplant in adult hematology from Princess Margaret Cancer Center, Toronto, Canada. He holds DM in hematology from Madras Medical College and DNB in pediatrics. This was preceded by MD in pediatrics from Government Medical College, Aurangabad, and MBBS from PhD Institute of Medical Science and Research, Coimbatore. Before joining Esther Med City Center of Excellence in Oncology, he was a consultant hematologist at Medical Trust Hospital, Kochi, and a resident <coughs> hematologist at Kuwait Cancer <coughs> Control Center, Kuwait's only tertiary cancer center. He has also taught pediatric hematology as an assistant professor at Sri Ramachandra Medical College, Chennai. His research work on highly specialized area of hemato-oncology has been published in many repeated peer-reviewed national and international journals. I request him to inaugurate our webinar and give some words of wisdom. Over to Dr. Ramaswamy. Uh, <clears throat> good morning to all. At the outset, I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Agarwal, MD, and MHE Group for giving me this opportunity. In fact, Dr. Agarwal was and is an inspiration to me to specialize hematology almost three decades ago when I first met him in Government Medical College, Aurangabad, when he came for a talk. The world of wisdoms from my side is we must use our clinical acumen and the skills on a daily practice, which is constant throughout our life from the time of postgraduate experience. And detailed clinical history of the examination will decide in the due course for assessing the performance status and also selecting the treatment modalities and sometimes even the prognosis from the detailed history and the clinical evaluation. Always tracking the past and the present and also the future blood counts sometimes can give a decision making regarding the treatment and the outcome. Communication is very, very important skill which we need to imbibe in our career along with our clinical knowledge. Whenever we discuss with the patients, it always means to be keeping in consideration of the accessibility, availability, and the affordability of the treatment modalities, and also in the patient's own understanding capacity, it has to be discussed. Sometimes the patients may be recording the information which is provided without, without our knowledge, but it is always better to have a complete clinical discussions so that it will be easy for them to have a second opinion based on the understanding as well as the recording. And also it will be easy for them to take a clinical decisions. And also we should keep it in mind that whatever is being said is also available on the online and for the tech savvy patients, it may be easy for them to understand. So always we should make it to have a thorough clinical discussions with the patient and the communication is very, very important. And not only that, please put it in the writing and also sometimes video recording for a high risk complicated cases like a stem cell transplantations because then there are no proper guidelines. Sometimes we may not be able to go with a complete proper guidelines. In such, way, in such cases, you may have to discuss with the expertise in the our seniors in the, our hematology forum like you can discuss with like Dr. M.B. Agarwal, even he is guiding us in our in the current era. Like that, you can discuss with your own mentors or the seniors so that the patient can, will be the ultimatum in our treatment motto. And again, always do not hesitate to discuss the case with the expertise. It will be useful ultimately for the patient care. And the last but not the least, my pronouns to Dr. Agarwal and the team for their continuous effort in the dissemination of the latest knowledge and updates in the hematology 
which is just a click away. And one more thing, personally, I am thanking to the team is, even in case if you are not able to attend, you can be able to re -go, go through that again subsequently as it is available freely on the online service. So there is age is not a bar in assimilating the knowledge and will be always useful in the clinical practice. And Dr. Agarwal is my mentor, which you can see even at this age, he is teaching us and he is sharing his knowledge and he is also gaining the knowledge from their expertise. I am wishing all the best for the today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramaswamy, for sparing your time, preparing a wonderful speech, conveying a great message to our students and all other faculty members. You have been always with us for the last 30 years for our academic activities. Whenever I met you, it has been a great pleasure to interact with you. Thank you so much. And now we go on to the lecture of the day from Dr. Rivera. You will all agree that the whole scene of adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia has totally changed in the era of immunotherapy with the various kinds of modalities of drugs available, linatumumab, anatuzumab, CAR T therapy, and even certain changes in the T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The treatment has totally revolutionized, especially in the relapse setting. And to discuss all this, we have Dr. Rivera with us. Sir, over to you. Uh, okay, uh, can you hear the slides? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the Mumbai Hematology Group and to Dr. Agarwal uh, for having invited me uh, to share with you uh, the, the progresses in adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So uh, there are evident progresses, as, as Dr. Agarwal, Agarwal uh, said uh, in, in a minute. And really, I, I will try uh, to discuss uh, with you in 15 minutes, uh, and then uh, I'll try to answer uh, to your questions. So, uh, well, uh, well, these are my disclosures. Well, I split my, my talk uh, in four areas, one of the pH, pH positive ALL, the second of B cell precursor pH negative ALL, in, in third, the T ALL, and few words about mature B uh, ALL. So uh, for pH positive ALL, the, the recent times began in, two, in 2001 when imatinib was discovered and changed absolutely the panorama of the treatment of the disease. And really, uh, the, the discovery of imatinib and then dasatinib, then nilotinib, then ponatinib uh, have uh, provided significant advances in, the, in this disease. Uh, just to remind that, that uh, imatinib is approved for first and second line, dasatinib only is approved uh, after resistance or intolerance to imatinib, nilotinib is not formally approved uh, uh, for the treatment of pH positive ALL, uh, also is the case uh, with, bonat with bosutinib, and ponatinib is only approved in first line in case of T315Y mutation, and uh, in second line is approved after the satinib failure or in case of uh, uh, not possibly to give imatinib. So, uh, well, there are two, two main lines in, uh, of the treatment of ALL. Uh, the first begin with uh, combining imatinib with the standard chemotherapy. Uh, this demonstrated the superiority overall uh, uh, over uh, historical, uh, 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 historical treatments, and really this has uh, evolved uh, and then uh, ev evolved when the combination, and the last one is the combination uh, with ponatinib. On the other hand, there is uh, another way of thinking that combining uh, uh, first or second and recently uh, third generation TKI combined with uh, attenuated or or, or minimal chemotherapy, and recently combined with uh, blinatumumab. So these are the two main lines of uh, treatment of pH-positive ALL. 
Uh, well, uh, as, as an example, this is the, the MD Anderson experience uh, that began with chemotherapy. Uh, and the second is the use of imatinib or dasatinib combined with chemotherapy, really a significant advance, but uh, a, a high uh, relapse rate. And then the third step with ponatinib with chemotherapy, uh, then uh, improved uh, the, the outcome clearly, and recently the use of uh, ponatinib and blinatugumab. So this, this cartoon uh, is a clear, uh, a clear uh, cartoon showing the evolving landscape of treatment of pH positive ALL. So uh, the, uh, when combined with intensive chemotherapy, really uh, what we seen, with the, what we have seen is uh, an impressive, complete morphological rate, and really, uh, and really, this has been translated in uh, uh, improved overall survival, and in our recently trial from Spain combining ponatinib and chemotherapy followed by transplantation, the outcome is 96% of overall survival. So really, this way provides uh, important results. That's, this is an example of the MD Anderson phase two trial uh, in hyper CBAT plus ponatinib and, and with a prolonged follow-up, 70% overall survival is still maintained with more than five years follow-up. So the combination of chemotherapy and third generation TKI is one of the ways to treat this disease. Our trial in Spain, uh, it was a phase two trial that, that also showed a high morphological response, a high probability of transplantation in complete response, and this has been translated in an important overall survival, better, high, clearly better than our historical uh, trial with imatinib and chemotherapy. So ponatinib chemotherapy and transplantation is uh, one way of to treat uh, patients with pH positive ALL. Uh, uh, another, another approach is to decrease the intensity of chemotherapy when combined with TKI. And this has been observed with imatinib, dasatinib, and recently with ponatinib. So uh, again, uh, high co complete uh, response rate, uh, really uh, no, virtually no mortality in induction, and this has also been translated in promising survival. The last trial uh, with uh, only ponatinib with steroids was completed by the Italian group and showed a, a promising overall survival in elderly people or people uh, not fit for transplantation that, that showed a complete molecular response uh, at, at, uh, in, at 24 weeks, uh, about uh, 40%. Uh, so really, Really, it's, it's, a, it's an avan advance because we can spare chemotherapy, but in this specific trial, uh, really uh, the cardiac and vascular events were, were, were really uh, high, uh, and this uh, was due uh, because ponatinib was used at a, at a high dose. Really, uh, uh, up to now, we use ponatinib in lower doses, 30 milligrams, at the beginning and then reduce it to 15 milligrams. Well, uh, the, the last uh, improvement in the therapy of pH positive ALL has been the combination of TKI plus immunotherapy with blinatumumab. And there are uh, one completed trial, the the DIALVA trial from the Italian group combining the satinib and, and corticosteroids for induction, followed by blinatumumab and continued with the satinib with really an, an important overall survival uh, in, in a most recently, uh, most recent update, this survival is about 80%. The, the SWOC, the, the American, uh, the Southwest Oncology Group trial had a similar approach with similar results. And recently, the MD Anderson combined ponatinib and blinatumumab uh, with uh, very, very impressive uh, results without allogeneic transplantation. And now it's time to randomize the trials that, that really uh, will uh, try to demonstrate the superiority of the approach of uh, immuno uh, 
and TKI uh, therapy over the uh, traditional chemotherapy and, uh, and uh, transplantation. But these are trials that are ongoing. Well, uh, the Dasatini Plinatumumab, the Dialba trial from the, from the Italian group, uh, has demonstrated really 75%, uh, 80% overall survival with a median follow-up of uh, uh, now uh, of four years in the last update. Really, the, the, uh, this, this trial showed uh, a, a good molecular response after blinatumumab, even in cases with uh, TKI, uh, with TKI uh, mutation. So really demonstrated that this combination can overcome the, 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 the appearance of this deleterious mutation. The, the MD Anderson showed the combination of ponatinib and blinatumumab. This is really, really a chemo-free trial because uh, only uh, ponatinib uh, and, and uh, blinatumumab uh, are administered in induction and in consolidation, and then uh, the, the typical uh, maintenance uh, with, uh, in this case, with 15 milligrams of ponatinib. This, this study uh, has more than 60 patients now uh, accrued, and really the, the complete hematological response was high as expected. But what, what is impressive is the complete molecular response even at, uh, when N NGS is used uh, as evaluation of this response. The, the two years overall survival is about 90%. Only three relapses uh, have been occurred and only one patient has been transplanted uh, in first complete remission. So the, the remaining patients are still under ponatinib uh, therapy and or ponatinib plus blinatumumab therapy. So really, this is an important advance. And if this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, this maintains over time, it, I think that is, this will be the next standard of care of treatment of pH positive ALL. When, when uh, coming again from the, from the Italian trial, this, this trial demonstrated that patients that received transplantation, it was f uh, uh, half of the patients, really had the same outcome than, than patients who were not transplanted. But really, uh, this, this was not a comparative, a fully comparative study because patients allografted uh, were enriched in MRD positive cases. So in this, in this specific trial, physicians uh, tended to transplant only patients who were MRD positive at the end of the uh, dasatinib and blinatumumab phase of the study. And this study also showed that there was a subgroup of patients with poor prognosis, and this subgroup was, um, was uh, based on, the, on those who have the Icarus Plus signature, so Icarus Plus CDK and uh, 2 MB uh, uh, genetic uh, signature. So this is very important because uh, this, this specific subgroup uh, merits further investigation because the, the typical uh, TKI plus immunotherapy doesn't work well with this specific trial. And, and this has also been uh, observed in, in the MD Anderson trial using ponatinib. Those patients with the Icarus Plus signature had a really a poor prognosis compared with those patients without this signature. And this poor prognosis was exclusively due to a higher probability of, uh, of relapse. Really, this is important to, to, uh, to face with this a specific subgroup of patients for new uh, options of therapy. Well, uh, really a face-to-face -face, uh, com uh, comparison between ponatinib and imatinib was really awaited. And the only phase trial in this, in this setting has been recently presented uh, in several congresses. And uh, it, it compares in a, uh, in a randomized two-to-one fashion the ponatinib uh, with attenuated chemotherapy combined uh, uh, versus 
uh, imatinib versus the with the same attenuated chemotherapy. This is a phase three trial, a global phase three trial uh, that uh, showed uh, really uh, with a primary endpoint was MRD negative complete response at the end of the induction. Uh, and this was observed in the ponatinib group was 35% versus 70% uh, in the imatinib group. The, the primary endpoint was achieved at the end of induction, uh, regardless of complete response assessment, really the same was observed, really the, 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 it, it demonstrated that at short time, ponatinib uh, and chemotherapy was more effective uh, in reducing the MRD uh, bulk of the disease in pH positive ALL. And uh, the, this, were, this translated in a better duration of MRD negativity and uh, significantly shorter to, <coughs> to uh, better short, uh, sorry, better to time to treatment failure uh, in the in patients who received ponatinib. Up to now, with this short follow-up, the event-free survival, it was the uh, secondary uh, endpoint, really uh, was better from the uh, uh, in the ponatinib arm but this uh, is not uh, statistically significant but really the the median with imatinib has been reached at 29 months and has not been reached in the in the uh, ponatinib arm so and the the progression free survival it was not uh, it, it was not pre-specified in the trial, but really it has been calculated a posteriori and really favored clearly the uh, ponatinib arm. So it's possible uh, 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 clearly that that uh, ponatinib and uh, attenuated chemo uh, could be in the future the next standard of therapy in this disease. Uh, really, uh, when we uh, when compared the, the toxicity, there were not difference in the in the ponatinib versus the imatinib arm, uh, especially in globally in great uh, three to four adverse events, and also and most important uh, in the frequency of uh, occlusive arterial or venous uh, events on the ponatinib versus the imatinib arm. Uh, also, the reduction of chemotherapy was uh, in, uh, in the same level in, two, uh, in the two trials. Well, uh, now uh, there are uh, randomized trials. It's very important to, for comparison. <laughs> and this is the trial from the GMEMA that compares the, the ponatinib and blinatumumab uh, versus the typical imatinib chemotherapy, uh, and this is a trial that is ongoing and also uh, will uh, demonstrate uh, if, if uh, this trial achieves the, the major endpoint that perhaps the combination ponatinib and blinatumumab will be superior that that. Uh, chemotherapy and imatinib, and then could be the standard of care. The French group had another, another approach, and then and then uh, combined uh, bincristine and, and steroids, so attenuated chemo, the, including uh, ponatinib, and then blinatumumab, uh, intermediate uh, chemotherapy, and then a randomization between allogeneic transplantation uh, preceded by blina or chemotherapy, typical chemotherapy with maintenance, uh, uh, typical. No? So, and the objective of this trial is really to compare the, the, the allotransplantation versus the chemo approach in patients treated with ponatinib and uh, blinatumumab in induction. Well, uh, really, there are two uh, ongoing trials. We expect results in the forthcoming years, but it will be important results in this setting. Because the, the balance between chemotherapy and transplantation is one of the, of the major issues now uh, in, the, in the therapy uh, of pH-positive ALL. Should we transplant all patients with a pH-positive ALL? Should we transplant only MRD? 
HRD positive patients at the end of consolidation? Should be transplanted uh, patients with high genetic background? The, there are questions that has uh, that have to be solved in the forthcoming years. This is uh, my 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 view of how to manage uh, pH positive ALL uh, currently after frontline therapy. Uh, the, there is the MRD should be evaluated not at the end of induction, but uh, at the end of induction and consolidation, at really at three months. And if uh, MRD is negative, but the patient has uh, a high genetic risk, that, that means the Icarus Plus signature, the patient should be allotransplanted and followed by maintenance. But if the patients uh, are negative at three months, uh, for MRD, perhaps uh, the patient could be continue continue with uh, TKI and chemotherapy and then TKI maintenance. So, uh, sparing the transplantation in this subgroup of patients. On the contrary, those patients who are MRD positive at the end uh, 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 of the three, the third month, uh, we have to change the TKI used in first line, uh, introduce immunotherapy with plinatumumab, uh, it's, it's approved because there is, uh, the patient is MRD uh, positive, and then followed by allogeneic transplantation because this subgroup is, uh, is really a poor prognosis subgroup. Well, this is one view, but, but really uh, perhaps could be uh, uh, modified in the future uh, in the light of uh, the, the new uh, trials. Well, Moving uh, on the other on the other uh, subgroup of patients, those patients who are B cell pre precursor ALL with pH uh, negative, uh, and uh, really there are several several uh, trials based on chemotherapy and transplantation, uh, and really uh, the, the, these trials, these modern trials, show it really a complete morphological response around 90% uh, with, with good uh, promising uh, MRD negative at the end of induction, half of the patients, and the, the overall survival is around 50%. Really, these are uh, several several groups from from uh, France, from uh, Spain, from Japan, from Italy, uh, from Netherlands, and others. So, really, uh, th these are the current trial, uh, uh, the current uh, approach. Of, for these patients. But now we, we have uh, uh, faced in the immunotherapy era, and really we have uh, several possibilities uh, to, to introduce early uh, uh, these, these drugs, for example, blinatumumab, inotuzumab, also rituximab, and recently the, the uh, CAR T. So this, this uh, advent that, that these immunotherapies approved for relapsed refractory ALL are now moving, moving to the first line therapy. Uh, and uh, with the use of this, uh, of this uh, approaches, uh, really uh, we have uh, observed an improvement uh, over years of the therapy of patients with pH negative ALL. This is again the, the MD Anderson history, uh, hypercivat, uh, hypercivat plus rituximab, hypercivat uh, 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 with blinatumumab uh, or inotuzumab, and really uh, for young patients, the, the, the overall survival has overpassed, overpassed 50%. And for elderly people, really there are also uh, uh, improvements in a, led, in a lesser degree that, that young adults, but really demonstrated the, the same, the, the introduction of, of uh, inotuzumab, blinatumumab, uh, etc., have uh, improved, are improving the, the, the prognosis of these patients. Let's see what, what, uh, what uh, there are the results of several phase two trials uh, uh, on frontline blinatumumab uh, and inotuzumab or combined or both in adults with newly diagnosed ALL, newly diagnosed. So there are, uh, there are trials uh, ongoing, no? And, and there are uh, uh, the, the complete response 
the complete morphological response is uh, obtained in nearly all patients. It, it's, it has been improved from 90% with chemo to, to 100% of, of, of chemo plus blina, uh, a, high, a high percentage of MRD negativity at the end of the induction, and these are being translated in an improved survival, but really uh, certainly with a short follow-up. There are some, some examples, the, the Italian group that demonstrated a good overall survival, except for the patients with the pH-like signature. The, the Graal also, the, the French study, demonstrates a, a good, a good disease-free survival and overall survival. The, the, the Dutch trial have demonstrated the feasibility of introduc introducing Blina to map as early in the preface, really, uh, and uh, with important results. So there are some examples of this, this uh, immunotherapy added in first line uh, uh, therapy um, uh, in pH negative ALL. But also, it has been done for older patients with ALL, in, uh, for which uh, there is uh, an, an important need because most of these patients are not uh, candidates to a stem cell transplantation. And then there are combinations with uh, Blina. There are ke chemo plus Blina, Eno, or even Blina and Enotuzumab has been in the MD Anderson trial. Again, a good uh, complete response in the order of 80%, good MRD negativity uh, early at early time point and promising overall survival and again with short follow-up. So really there are promises for uh, patients, either young adults or older adults, uh, combining uh, chemotherapy uh, uh, with uh, Inotuzumab, blinatumumab, or inotuzumab followed by blinatumumab. So we have uh, important issues in this in this study. The, the, we can see uh, several uh, studies uh, uh, demonstrating that that the, this revolution uh, of immunotherapy and uh, even attenuated chemo. So when, use, when we use immunotherapy, we can attenuate our intensive chemo and, and spare uh, patients from toxicity. Really, uh, the, there is one example of, of the, the first line immunotherapy and, and also, also uh, attenuation of hyper uh, in this case from MD Anderson, uh, 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 High, uh, less, less high per C, but uh, 50%, and currently 70% uh, less chemo when it's combined with blinatumumab uh, and, and, uh, and in this case, ofatumumab as anti-CD20 therapy. So the results are also important and ongoing. Well, uh, there is uh, recently was presented a phase three trial, the first phase three trial that has demonstrated the usefulness of introduction of uh, immunotherapy, blinatumumab in this case, in first line during consolidation. This is this trial was presented uh, now uh, at, at the uh, was presented at the ASH and updated in uh, Europe in the recent European uh, IHA uh, uh, study. The, those patients uh, who were MRD negative at the in at the end of induction and intensification were randomized to blina and chemo of, uh, as consolidation versus uh, chemotherapy only. And uh, the, the overall survival was significantly longer uh, of, uh, for these MRD negative patients uh, at the end of consolidation compared uh, with uh, chemo only. So really, uh, this advantage of, of survival, it was, it was the main, uh, the main aim point, uh, really uh, was uh, an important new. Uh, for patients who were MRD positive 
at the end uh, at the end of consolidation. Also, that they were randomized. There were less patients because uh, most of the patients were uh, treated uh, with blina and chemo because it was approved. But but before the approval, uh, the, this trial uh, also showed an advantage of uh, inoveral survival uh, for these MRD positive patients at the end of consolidation. So uh, it, this demonstrates that uh, either with MRD negative or MRD positive patients when treated uh, with uh, blina and chemo and uh, in consolidation, the, uh, the, there is an important advance in overall survival. But really, uh, this uh, the, this trial has been uh, updated uh, uh, in the last IHA meeting and demonstrated that this advantage in survival favored patients, uh, uh, younger patients, those uh, patients, uh, those older patients who were MRD negative at the end of consolidation, those patients uh, no, not, not had advantage of the incorporation of blinatumumab. So this, this trial favored only those young patients who were MRD negative at the end of induction and uh, intensification. Uh, again, uh, the, the MRD level was also important, and patients who were uh, an, uh, had an undetectable MRD at randomization uh, had a better overall survival, but those patients who had a, an MRD uh, between undetectable and, and uh, uh, 1 to 10 to minus 4 did uh, not have benefit of the addition of clinatumumab. This is very important to, uh, to understand this because no, no, there are uh, patients, uh, in, in summary, young patients with, uh, with deep MRD re, uh, negativity are the, those who are benefited, especially benefited from the addition of uh, blinatumumab in consolidation, at least in, the, in this trial. Well, there are some chemo-free uh, attempts also uh, uh, in uh, older patients with newly diagnosed pH negative ALL. And this, this trial recently presented uh, at the ASCO and the IHA meeting uh, that uh, showed uh, th this is a complicated, <coughs> a complicated trial, but really patients received uh, first uh, inotuzumab, and then if the, this was a good response, uh, they uh, follow it by consolidation with blinatumumab. If there was not a good response, more inotuzumab was given. And uh, at the end, those patients were consolidated with, uh, with blinatumumab and uh, then, uh, then uh, uh, and afterwards. And really, this chemo free approach showed that the induction with inotuzumab showed an overall response rate of 85% only inotuzumab. Uh, and those patients uh, who uh, proceeded then to uh, blinatumumab, this, uh, uh, this uh, overall response improved to 97%, really, it's important. And now uh, this is translated in a median event-free survival uh, of uh, an important, important uh, in, in event free survival and overall survival. And this, this is important because, uh, because this was not a very toxic uh, schema. Only cytopenias were the, the most important grade three to four events. Uh, it, the, the trial was tolerable and at short term, the combination of inoin induction followed by blinatumumab in consolidation have demonstrated activity and tolerability. Really, the, the, the short follow the follow-up is short, but the, this opened a new a, a, a new door for the treatment of older adults with newly diagnosed pH negative ALL. Well, uh, th there is there is uh, really uh, other promises in in the treatment of uh, of uh, of uh, ALL. Those patients with uh, KNMT two A arranged, the former ML uh, ML rearranged ALL. Uh, the, this trial in infants in infants demonstrated a great advantage 
in uh, overall survival and uh, a significant reduction of the probability of relapse when the, with the addition of blinatumumab uh, to the standard chemo for these patients. So it's another example that early addition of uh, blinatumumab uh, uh, translates an, an important advantage on survival. And really another way different from immunotherapy is the use of uh, of uh, targeted therapy, for example, menin inhibitors, in this case, rebumenib uh, for patients with, with this uh, specific subtype uh, of uh, ALL. Really, uh, the, 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 there is the, it's opened a new door. We, we are now using uh, chemotherapy. Uh, we can uh, uh, add immunotherapy and perhaps uh, in the future, we uh, will uh, add uh, these uh, targeted therapies for a specific subtypes of ALL, in this case, the MLL rearranged uh, ALL. So the, the promise uh, that there are, the, the, uh, this, this is an optimism for the future uh, uh, in improving the results uh, of ALL. Now, uh, there is uh, one uh, ongoing trial. It it's has been opened several months ago in, in, in many countries. So uh, uh, comparing uh, in elderly patients the, the use of blinatumumab with attenuated chemotherapy versus the standard chemotherapy. So in order to demonstrate uh, the, the promises that, that have been shown in phase two trials to demonstrate in a phase three trial. This trial has been opened. We are participating in this trial and we expect the, to demonstrate that the, the uh, attenuation of chemotherapy and incorporation of blinatumumab could be, could be, I don't know, a better approach to the standard chemotherapy regimen for elderly patients with pH uh, negative ALL. Uh, the, this, this trial uh, is feasible. Uh, it has been a safety run study in, in first 10, 10 patients demonstrated uh, efficacy and, and safety, and this uh, uh, allowed to proceed with the uh, with the phase three trial, really there are uh, also several uh, other randomized studies uh, in, in in this case in adolescents and young adults in in US that that uh, that uh, uh, randomizes the use of inotuzumab post induction uh, and before consolidation uh, versus no inotuzumab uh, and uh, in these patients. This study has been. Halted, uh, halted now because this the, the inotuzumab arm was associated uh, with a significant increase of uh, of infections and now uh, uh, an amendment is ongoing uh, re re reducing the dose of of inotuzumab uh, in the experimental arm. Another trial, uh, also from US, randomized the, the, the use of attenuated chemotherapy plus uh, inotuzumab followed by maintenance uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with standard uh, chemotherapy, uh, also with maintenance. So to try to demonstrate that the, the early use of inotuzumab could improve the results. These are, these are phase three trials directed to uh, investigate the, the role uh, in a phase three uh, study, the role of uh, immunotherapy combined with attenuated chemotherapy in the management of uh, uh, pH negative patients uh, uh, in, uh, with ALL. Let's move to the TALL. TALL is really a, 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 a disease in which the progress is, has been less evident. This is our distribution of subtypes of, of TALL in our ongoing trial. And we uh, demonstrate that, that this tri uh, our trial is very, very good for patients with thymic ALL, but those patients with, uh, with uh, pre-TALL and early T-cell precursor ALL uh, <coughs> are associated with poor survival and uh, a higher uh, probability of response. So the, 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 stand, the typical standard chemotherapy uh, faces uh, very well uh, for cortical TALL, but there, are, there is a room 
for improvement in PRT and ETP uh, ALL uh, currently. There are uh, se uh, there are several uh, ways to 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 show that that uh, the genetic backgrounds in ALL matchers. Uh, so this is the French study that demonstrated that the the RASP10 signature, uh, the RASP10 mutations uh, were independently associated uh, with MRD for prognosis of ALL. In our study from the, uh, in the, the Spanish group, we have demonstrated a genetic signature also included RAS mutations, but also another mutations that uh, were deleterious for, uh, for uh, TALL. So really uh, the genetic background uh, is important in TALL in order to uh, separate the subgroups in which we need uh, more, more, uh, uh, more to do uh, for improving the prognosis. The, the standard therapy has limited uh, options. Our study from Spain has demonstrated that the, the intensification of the chemotherapy, the standard chemotherapy with, with uh, downorubicin uh, and, 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 and are, but increasing asparaginase and methotrexate uh, demonstrated a reduction a significant reduction in of toxicity, uh, but did not impact uh, on the probability of relapse. So we, uh, in our case, we demonstrated that, that the intensification of several less important drugs uh, could be feasible. Uh, this translated in, a, uh, in improved overall survival, but, be, but by reduction of the toxicity, not by increasing the effectivity. Another possibility is, is to do allogeneic stem cell transplantation for patients with ETP ALL, and the French group demonstrated that transplantation uh, uh, where, uh, uh, did, did uh, overcome the, the poor prognosis of ETP ALL. So those patients with ETP ALL are now candidates uh, of, uh, of allogeneic transplantation, regardless of their MRD. But there are, uh, there are many possibilities, theoretical possibilities uh, for treatment uh, of uh, TALL, notch inhibitors, for <coughs> jack inhibitors, uh, venetoclax, navitoclax, so uh, BCL2 uh, or BH3 mimetics, uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies, anti-CD38, uh, CAR T. So there are many, many possibilities that are really uh, act being actively investigated in the current times. So uh, there are some, some information. Nelarabin, Nelarabin uh, is useful for relapsed ALL, but it has not demonstrated the uh, effectively uh, effectiveness uh, when incorporated into first line. This is the MD Anderson study that uh, combined hypersivat plus nelarabin and, uh, and compared with the historical hypersivat. No, uh, no, uh, no significant, <coughs> no significant except for patients with ETP ALL that, that they, they, show it, they show it a better uh, overall survival. Uh, a randomized trial from the British group demonstrated that Nelarabin upfront uh, did, not, uh, did not provide any advantage on, uh, on survival so, uh, compared versus the standard of care. So, Really, uh, nelarabin has a limited, uh, limited uh, effectiveness uh, in first line therapy, not in relapse. That uh, that uh, you know that this drug is approved for for relapse, not for first line TLL. Another another possible uh, activity in these cases for relapsed refractory patients are the use of BH3 mimetics, the, the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax, the BCL XL uh, navitoclax, and their combination have demonstrated some activity either in BALL, but also in TALL, especially in early T-cell precursor ALL. It could be uh, another way to, to be investigated uh, in this setting. 
this combination really uh, was associated with, uh, with a median overall survival of six months. And really, uh, there were observed uh, responses in relapses after transplantation, after CAR T, after Blina or Ino in B cell precursor ALL. So, this combination has some activity that merits to be in, investigated and incorporated uh, in the armamentarium in this case of the ALL. The data to move up, uh, uh, CD38 uh, uh, monoclonal antibody combined with the standard chemotherapy has been investigated in, in children and in adults with, with, uh, uh, with uh, ALL. And really the, the Delphinus trial that, uh, that uh, incorporated children and adolescents and young adults demonstrated some, uh, some response Really, there were relapsed refractory TALL <coughs> that demonstrated some responses, especially in ALL uh, uh, in children. So really, but this, the, the median survival is, was really short, but the trial was feasible. So that atumumab could have some role, some role in, uh, in patients with relapsed refractory TALL. I think that the most the, the hope in, in for TALL uh, in relapsed refractory are really the CAR T for TALL. CAR T for TALL are, are really uh, more complicated to produce than CAR T for B cell precursor ALL. Uh, they, they're uh, a part of their evident antileukemic effect. There were uh, three three uh, background, three uh, challenges to be overcome. The fratricide, uh, uh, the fratricide of CARTIS, uh, the, the product of contamination uh, the, uh, uh, and the effectiveness in vitro, but less effectively when they are infused to the patients and the, the T cell immunodeficiency uh, in uh, that there are uh, to be overcome. But there are several uh, CAR T's under development. The most developed are anti CD7 CAR T, but also anti CD5, anti CD30 for, for, uh, for lymphomas in this case. Anti-TRBC1, this is very important uh, a study, or anti-CD1A that, that uh, for uh, cortical TALL. <laughs> the design of CAR T implies that uh, genetic manipulation in order to eliminate CD70, to eliminate the T cell. Uh, uh, the, the, the T cell receptor and modulate the, the possibility of graft versus horse disease. But there are some interesting, interesting uh, approaches. One, one is from China that demonstrated that there is a subset of, of CD uh, of uh, normal T cells uh, with, uh, uh, with CDs expressing CD8, of course, CD7, resistant to fratricide. And when this, uh, this CAR T uh, resistant uh, uh, are infused to the patient, the, there was really a high, a high effectivity. Uh, and uh, in, this, uh, in, in the last update of this study, 53 patients really uh, uh, important, an important uh, success manufacture, uh, important uh, MRD negative complete response and promising overall survival, although many patients were submitted to uh, allogeneic transplantation after the CAR T. So, well, there is, uh, there is one way. Another is the, the development of allogeneic <coughs> anti-CD7 CAR T, again from China, uh, this implies the, the genetic manipulation uh, as, uh, as uh, shown pre previously, and there are also some uh, efficacy and really, uh, well, there is promising efficacy. And an important, an important uh, uh, challenge, an important issue is that, that the, the use, the use uh, uh, of, of CC, anti-CC R9 CAR T, because Normal, normal T cells do not express or express minimally this, uh, this uh, antigen. <coughs> and uh, when we use this CAR T, 
we, we prevent the fratricide and the T-cell aplasia. So, and really, this has been demonstrated that, that anti-CD, uh, 90 CD, CCR9 CAR-T are really effective uh, destroying blast of TALL uh, really in vitro. So there are now uh, phase one studies ongoing uh, in order to demonstrate this efficacy in vivo. Another, another uh, approach is very, very, very new. It has been uh, present, published last week, uh, really is, is the use of this, this uh, SEC-TM1 as, as a, a, a link to, to the to the to the, the, the T cell blast and this this uh, this uh, this uh, antigen binding uh, combined uh, in 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 patients with in the subset population of uh, CD7 negative uh, cells in peripheral blood allow it to build a CAR T uh, with, uh, without minimal, with minimal possibility of fratricide and uh, high efficacy in vivo. Now, again, CAR T, uh, now a phase one trials in, in humans are being uh, are in cures. Well, uh, finally, uh, some words uh, with mature VALL. You know that mature VALL is the leukemic part of Burkitt lymphoma, and th there has been uh, a specific studies uh, in, 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 the, in, in, the in, the, in the last century and the, uh, for in the several years of, of first year of this century, uh, combining chemotherapy, several types of chemotherapies, but the, the, the most important uh, thing is the, the addition of rituximab to these trials. And this has changed the prognosis of this disease in adults uh, and in order that, that the incorporation to the standard, standard chemo or uh, reduced infusional uh, chemotherapy has changed the, 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 the the scope of the disease, and now uh, this this the mature VALL is one of the most curable ALL in adults. Uh, this is, for example, this is several studies uh, uh, in uh, for, by several groups, and uh, recently uh, 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 an IPI for Burkitt lymphoma has has been developed, including H, ECOC, LDH, um, and CNS involvement and demonstrated that a clear uh, a clear separation between three groups. This is our study in Spain. We we have uh, we have shown almost eighty percent overall survival, especially uh, for uh, for Burkitt lymphoma. But in red, there are mature VALL. Sixty percent overall survival really is very is very promising for these patients. And the most important thing is that, that the response is achieved, achieved early and no late relapses are observed in this specific subset of ALL. Well, uh, really uh, another, another improvement has been uh, using, no, not, not using uh, massive chemotherapy uh, and uh, combine it with blinatumab, but also I blina to sorry, rituximab, and really just combining infusional chemotherapy uh, with those adjusted air epoch. Uh, really, the, the, the results are promising. And when compared uh, in a phase three trial, were superimposable of the classical uh, uh, classical chem intensive chemotherapy uh, plus uh, blina to now, uh, the problem of, of Burkitt lymphoma leukemia is the relapse. And uh, when patient relapses, re really the possibilities of curing these patients are almost zero. And uh, this, this makes the ne necessity of, of um, to find novel approaches for these for this re resistant patients, be specific monoclonal antibodies, uh, also uh, CAR-T's, CD19 CAR-T's, MIC inhibitors, P 
PI3K uh, inhibitor, etc., etc., are, uh, are <coughs> really in, uh, in evolution uh, uh, in order to solve these dramatic consequences. Because when an, a patient relapses, really, uh, we have up to now we have lost the patient so there is an, an unmet need uh, and uh, further investigation is necessary for these uh, patients so uh, to conclude for ph positive ALL, the incorporation of ponatinib in first line therapy uh, is really one of the major advances uh, the immunotherapy combined with tki has also a further advances in, in this therapy, and this will uh, lead to the redefinition of the role of uh, allogeneic stem cell transplantation. Then, uh, for, for pH negative ALL, immunotherapy in first line combined with attenuated chemotherapy will probably be the the next uh, the next standard of care of these patients and uh, there are advances in precision medicine for certain subgroups for example many inhibitors for patients with mll rearranged all for tall we need uh, clinical trials with new molecules and immunotherapy now in relapse and refractory and hopefully in the future in first line all and for mature BALL, uh, the, the problem uh, is that uh, how to target the relapsed refractory patients with new molecules and immunotherapy, and this is uh, active investigation in this setting. Thank you very much. This is, the, this is Barcelona, and this is the hospital uh, in which uh, I work. This is the Jose Carreras Leukemia Research Institute. And, uh, and of course, uh, I'll conclude here and I'll be glad to uh, answer to the questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rivera. That was a beautiful review, very complete and very updated, really a lot of learning. Uh, we have our colleagues who would like to ask you some questions, starting with Dr. Yadav. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for the lucid talk. I have a question which goes back uh, three decades. Probably the treatment in today's day and ages is not significant. I see Professor Agarwal smile. We at our institute use a protocol MCP841 for patients older than 80 years of age who are not candidates for high dose methotrexate. We use it with PCI. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, um, no, um, uh, it's it's a possibility, really, but but I think that uh, high dose methotrexate and, and asparaginase, pegylated asparaginase, are the the two most important drugs in consolidation uh, for ALL, and and we uh, try uh, not avoiding uh, uh, this uh, as possible. I don't know. I don't have experience in in the in the approach you are uh, talking about, but really, well. Uh, uh, I, I don't know your results and, and because I cannot I cannot edit anything else. Uh, the issue with us is that we see a lot of patients who are not willing for protracted admissions. They just wish to come once in a week. So are we justified at giving in, in that scenario? Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you. Your voice is, is cut. Uh, a lot of patients who come to us Yes. are those who come from remote areas and they do not wish to stay with us for long. Yeah. They're not actually willing for high-dose methotrexate and prolonged admissions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, one alternative is the... Is the is, is, yeah, it's really, it's really difficult, difficult. Uh, it's really a difficult question. Perhaps, I don't know, because... Hypercibat is another alternative, but yes. but has also methotrexate in the part B. I don't know. I don't know what's. Uh, uh, I think it's a challenge because uh, that they have no other standard chance in my view. It's a pity. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, Doctor Yadav. Uh, we will be asking Doctor Sanket to give a question, but. 
I'll take one question from the audience before that. Is there any place for bortezomib in the treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia? Uh, is a place for? Bortezomib. Ah, bortezomib. Uh, well, uh, bortezomib is investigated in relapsed refractory uh, ALL in children. Uh, and, and there are uh, some results, but there are not mature results uh, in order to, to uh, incorporate this, this drug uh, to, the, to the armamentarium of relapsed refractory ALL. The experience in adults is, is, uh, is really almost zero. All the data come from pediatric studies and perhaps in could be a role, but it, I, I think that, that it could have a secondary role. This will not be a major drug for relapsed ALL. Thank you, sir. I'll take two more questions from the audience related to mature B-cell leukemia. One, is the maintenance therapy required? And second question is, is there a place for allogenic transplant after CR1? Uh, well, uh, for mature BALL, uh, uh, the transplantation has no role. Uh, really, uh, the allogeneic transplantation and also the autologous transplantation have not provided any advantage. And, and when a patient relapses, really, we don't, we don't have any opportunity. So we have tried uh, to use hyper but we have tried to use infusional uh, chemotherapy, if not use it in first line. But really, the, 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 there are no responses or short-term responses. I, I, my, my, my confidence who could be uh, in, uh, in immunotherapy uh, uh, with uh, either uh, with blinatumumab because the relapses are so explosive that mounting a CAR T is not feasible because the, 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 the bulky and, and relapse, but blinatumumab or, or the now B specific antibodies use it in aggressive uh, B cell lymphomas. Uh, these are the most promising uh, and, uh, and now uh, are um, phase one studies in development in combination with rescue chemotherapy. That's the only, uh, the only way uh, with some possibilities of being implemented in the near future. And the other question was whether maintenance therapy is required for ah, maintenance chemotherapy is not is not um, is not necessary for burkitt lymphoma. Uh, in our most recently trial uh, that it uh, that it's under now under publication, we have demonstrated that once complete response is achieved, the the induction the the the, chemo, the short term chemotherapy could be attenuated. But really, in any case, maintenance is necessary in patients with mature BALL or Burkitt lymphoma. Thank you, sir. Sanket, your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for your talk. Uh, I have a question regarding T-cell ALL. Is there a benefit of using capesis over high-dose methotrexate when we are using pediatric-inspired protocol? I am... I, I have not not heard very well the question. I am sorry. Uh, so high dose. Uh, the question is is on high dose methotrexate in high dose methotrexate versus capesis methotrexate. Ah, the, the capesis the capesis regimen. Well, yep. we we don't we I don't have a, a personal experience of the capesis regimen in adult ALL. So uh, all trials uh, in adult ALL, those hyper based based or those BFM-based in adults use uh, high-dose methotrexate, uh, two, three grams or even five grams a square meter, but uh, in continuous uh, infusion 24 hours. We don't use the, the Capizzi regimen. I'm sorry, but I don't have experience on, on that. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Abha will be asking her question. And before that, again, audience question. Uh, what should be the percentage CD20 positivity for using rituximab? 
mm, sorry, the, the frequency of a CD20 expression in, in B cell precursor ALL is around 20%, 20-30%. And, and then uh, the, the uh, studies who have demonstrated effectiveness of the, the use of uh, rituximab are in this specific subset of patients. There, there was a, a trial from the, from the British uh, group that demonstrated, that, that tried uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of uh, rituximab uh, in uh, regardless of the CD20 expression, the CD, CD20 level of expression. And this trial failed, failed to demonstrate effectiveness. So the only trial that has demonstrated effectiveness is the, the French trial that, that gave rituximab only in patients with 20% uh, or more CD20 expression and uh, followed in induction consolidation and maintenance. So uh, in, in all phases of the therapy of pH positive ALL. Uh, uh, pH negative ALL, sorry. CD20. Okay, sir. Uh, Ava, your question. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So my question is that you mentioned in pH positive ALL, imatinib is recommended as the first line treatment uh, my question was so that some institutes actually prefer desatinib in view of a better cns penetration so what are your comments on that yeah uh, well uh, we we don't use uh, desatinib in first line because it's not licensed at least in spain and really uh, in 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 europe not uh, i know that that many in many countries uh, use the satinib. Uh, I think that at the end, imatinib and the satinib have the same results, uh, uh, long-term results. Uh, the satinib crosses the, the blood band barrier, but is not is not the uh, substitute for uh, intrathecal therapy for CNS prophylaxis. So it's it's very important to to notice that because if you think that when giving uh, the satinib, we can omit CNS prophylaxis, patients will relapse at CNS. So I think that this advantage, this theoretical advantage, is counterbalanced by an adequate triple intrathecal therapy prophylaxis uh, in CNS. So I think this is not uh, considered an advantage. Uh, no, no, no significant advantage in my view. Thank you, sir. Okay, but another question from the audience. T lymphoblastic lymphoma in a young person. Uh, no involvement of blood or bone marrow. Now, this person, is the treatment different? And how do you follow up the patient? Uh, well, uh, uh, the... The treat in, in, in our country and, and in many countries, the treatment of uh, T lymphoblastic lymphoma is uh, absolutely the same of uh, T ALL. So, and in case of, uh, of bone marrow involvement, we will use the typical MRD uh, assessment. When there is no uh, uh, involvement of bone marrow, we use uh, PET, uh, PET TAC. Uh, in uh, for follow up, even uh, if I I think that it has not uh, demonstrated uh, bona fide that this is a good method of uh, of uh, of evaluating the residual disease because I think that that is not so so specific or so fine to to found uh, occult disease, but really is the only the only tool that we have for patients that uh, we, we that not have bone marrow involvement. Thank you. Sir, actually, uh, this was me because I'm having some issues with my raised hand sign. So I had posted it. Uh, so basically, I have this young 17-year-old boy and we started him on BFM 95. So now, like, uh, uh, we and uh, baseline, we did a PET and post-induction, we did a PET, which is in complete remission. So we still continued with the consolidation high dose, uh, like BFM high risk category and uh, consolidation methotrexid. So we complete the entire BFM 95 and then go for maintenance, like we follow the entire protocol or like we can cut short. That was another concern. 
because the family lives outside they need to come and stay in ahmedabad uh, for this so that i wanted to know <clears throat> so so the question is if pet has become negative very early in the course of the disease can they cut down the treatment Sh sorry uh, dr agarwal no. if the pet has become negative yeah can you reduce the intensity of the treatment no 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 uh, i uh, i am really happy when the the pet disease is, is negative but it, it doesn't change my my view what, what we have omitted is the the mediastinal irradiation and especially in the cases of pet ct negative because really uh, uh, well uh, we we are confident that perhaps there is no residual disease in the in the mediastinum no but really uh, we have to continue with the, with the therapeutic plan uh, and we have a good news of course thank you sir thank you dr priyanka your question thank you sir that was an excellent comprehensive update so i have two queries sir one is you showed that uh, in the ph positive all ponatinib and when you are using linatumumab and all how do you uh, give the cns prophylaxis for these patients only with triple it or there is a high dose methotrexate and if triple it what how do you space them and what is the dosage or with the methotrexate the dosage of these patients uh, well uh, the the a study the, the only a study with ponatinib and linatumumab uh, uh the, this is the, the phase two from the md anderson study uh, they they use intensive cns prophylaxis with uh, intrathecal methotrexate uh 12 doses so it's very important because these these patients are not protected uh, by cns relapse by high dose methotrexate by by blood uh, those uh, intravenous doses that cross the blood brain barrier so uh, uh, an intensive uh, uh, intrathecal prophylaxis is mandatory when we uh, we use we decide to use ponatinib and blinatumumab sir and the doses for the triple it sorry the sir, number the of the, the dosage <clears throat> like uh, the, dose, the dosage Oh. The, the dosage is 15 milligrams methotrexate uh, in, in each uh, intrathecal shot for at least 12 shots during the therapy. So you do not uh, start with uh, arasi, uh, cytarabine or uh, hydrocortisone uh, with that? No, no, no because uh, so we don't have uh, experience with the combination of ponatinib and, and blinatumumab because we are not participating in this trial. But, but what, what as, as far as I know, uh, they don't use uh, a high dose arasi and high dose intravenous methotrexate. And the only uh, CNS prophylaxis is done by intrathecal road. Right. And sir, another thing for pH positive ALL in adults and elder, elderly, do we look into the CSF cytology with flow cytometry or it is by conventional method for the elderly pH positive patients? Uh, so uh, 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 flow cytometry in the CNS. For the diagnosis, why well, yeah. the patient does well, not have uh, well, yeah, we we use the the flow cytometry uh, uh, and uh, and when when the results of of uh, of uh, flow cytometry uh, uh, in in my view are too sensitive uh, because they detect uh, uh, occult uh, CNS involvement is ma in many patients, but when you give an adequate CNS prophylaxis, the results of, of uh, patients with flow positive or flow negative are the same. So I think that we, we, we define CNS involvement by, cytolo by cytology, not by uh, flow cytometry, because when we, uh, those patients flow cytometry positive and flow cytometry negative have the same risk of, C, of CNS relapse. Only patients with clear cytological uh, uh, um, involvement uh, merit uh, intensive therapy, CNS-directed therapy. 
And so last question is, uh, how do you assess the MRD negativity, both by flow in the bone marrow as well as P190, BCR ABL for pH positive ALN or BCR ABL is sufficient enough to say that it is a MRD? Ableson uh, with the gene control, the, the Ableson control. Uh, this is uh, what we do uh, because still is the standard method of MRD assessment in pH positive ALN. Uh, there are some evidences that that perhaps the IGTCR uh, PCR could be uh, more specific than than the, the the PCR for BCR Abelson, and uh, there are also uh, uh, recent studies showing that NGS uh, is the the most specific uh, a specific way for uh, for uh, MRD assessment but in routine clinical practice up to now <clears throat> the 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 BCR Abelson ratio is the standard method of MRD assessment in pH positive ALL is still i don't know uh, in the near future thank you sir thank you very much thank you uh, a question from the audience <clears throat> what's your protocol for pH like Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Well, uh, uh, we we do not uh, participate in any trial uh, with uh, uh, with TKIs or with JAK inhibitors. So our our uh, study is to consider these patients high risk patients and to use uh, to to use uh, a standard chemo and allogeneic transplantation regardless of the MRD. We transplant uh, all patients uh, in first complete remission. Right, sir. An allied question is, do you transplant all adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia in first remission? No, 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 no. We, we, uh, we transplant uh, only, we, uh, our criteria for transplantations are two. One, poor MRD clearance at the induction and consolidation. Those patients who have these are automatically submitted to transplantation or those with high risk genetic. And this high risk genetics includes uh, KMT2A, so MLL rearranged ALL, uh, and, uh, and those with Icarus Plus signature and those uh, with high uh, uh, low, uh, 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 low hypodiploid ALL. These patients, regardless of MRD, uh, are submitted uh, to, uh, to uh, transplantation in first, in addition to those uh, pH-like signature, of course. So there are two questions related to post-transplant maintenance mm -hmm. for pH-negative patient and for pH-positive patient. After well. transplant, what do you do? Well, uh, for uh, <clears throat> for pH positive patients, we do not use a TKI maintenance systematically. Uh, we make a, a careful MRD uh, assessment after transplantation. If the MRD is a, is persistently negative, we do not do anything. If there is a positivity a positivation of MRD or MRD po remains positive after transplantation, we use TKI as maintenance. And for uh, pH negative ALL, we don't use uh, any maintenance therapy. And we are now implementing uh, a, phase, uh, a phase two trial, uh, giving um, um, uh, inotuzumab uh, uh, early after once hemato uh, hematological recovery has been achieved, we will give uh, three, no, four doses of inotuzumab uh, in order to prevent relapse for high risk patients only. Uh, this is a trial that we are now implementing in Spain. So, but, but uh, in the in in the current in the current doing. Uh, we don't do anything uh, for patients who uh, are pH negative ALL. So four cycles of inotuzumab, each with yes. three doses. Uh, yeah, but the dose is 0 0.5 milligrams a square meter. Uh, really low, low doses. 
in order to avoid uh, complications, hepatic complications or, or even VOD. So low dose uh, inotuzumab, but this is an ongoing trial. Uh, so we don't know uh, how, how we'll go. And we will compare uh, with, uh, uh, with parallel uh, patients that are not included in the trial in order to do a propensity score comparison. There's one question related to the duration of TKI after the transplant, if the patient was positive and then becomes yeah. negative. Yeah, it's, it's a, an unanswered question, really. Uh, uh, the, 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 simple, the simple thing is uh, indefinitely, but really, I think that it's not not a good, uh, a not it's not good for the patients to to receive uh, uh, TKI indefinitely. Uh, I think that five years is reasonable. It's a reasonable time to give uh, 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 TKI after transplantation. Thank you, sir, Doctor Saroj Panda. Your question. Hi, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, sir, you have answered almost all my questions what I was going to ask. But I've got a small mo questions more. This is regarding the role of rituximab in pH negative brief precursor ALL. If somebody is here, uh, CD20 positive and CD20 negative, does it make a difference? And how many doses of rituximab we give and which phase of the treatment? Yeah. Uh, well, we we uh, we are following the 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 French study. Uh, so uh, we we give rituximab only for those patients who have more than twenty percent CD twenty expression at diagnosis, and we use uh, two doses in induction, uh, one dose of rituximab in any consolidation cycle, and then during maintenance. Uh, one shot every three months. It, 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 at the end, it, it is about 12 to 14 uh, dose of uh, rituximab throughout the therapy of ALL. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So I've got one more question. In the baseline risk stratification, what do we do is a fish or a PCR and a conventional cardiotyping. Do you feel like that we should do a NGS in all patients at the baseline risk stratification? Yes. Uh, well, in our current trial, uh, uh, we we use uh, conventional cytogenetics, fish, uh, a SNP arrays, uh, and and then and then NGS. This is our uh, uh, our uh, doing uh, in any any newly diagnosed patients, and we with this. For, for techniques, we establish the genetic risk of the patient. If the patient has a poor genetic risk, the patient will be transplanted after consolidation. If not, and the MRD are negative, the patient will not be transplanted. But we will use these four techniques, conventional, fish, SNP arrays, and NGS. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So there is a related question. If you are doing NGS panel, can we do only conventional cardiotyping, fish and NGS? No, uh, we we uh, we use uh, uh, we use all these all these techniques uh, for every patient. So uh, I think that that it uh, in some cases it could be an over an over uh, diagnosis, but really uh, we do this in a centralized way in order to have samples for further investigation also. But really we apply uh, uh, for the genetic risk uh, I said before, uh, in order to decide to transplant or not. By do, uh, we do all these four, four techniques for all patients up to now. Right, so. Uh, there's one question related to the age up to which you use L-asparaginase-based protocol. At what age you do not use L-asparaginase? Well, uh, in our current protocol, we use uh, pegylated asparaginase up to the age of 60 years. 
but but uh, when the patient reaches 50 from 50 to 60 we uh, reduce the dose to half half dose and uh, really uh, we use the dose of 1500 uh, units for a square meters, a meter up to 50 years and we reduce to to half uh, for uh, 50, 50 to 60 years thank you sir Dr. Avriti, your question. Thank you very much, sir. Continuing to the NGS part, uh, lately I have encountered a case of BLL with the presence of FLT3 mutation and PAX5 ESSRB mutation fusions. So, sir, in such cases, how do we sh how should we approach the case? Because uh, the possibility of MPAL was ruled out. Uh, for that, I repeated the uh, flow cytometry again. I'm BLL. sorry, I have, not, I have not understood your question. I'm sorry. So BALL with the presence of FLT3 positivity on NGS along with PAX5 ESSRB fusion. Uh, yeah. Uh, In the case of your BALL. Quest your, your question refers to BALL with uh, FLT3 mutations? Yes. With FLT3 mutation yeah. and well, PAX5 well. mutation. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the, yeah. Uh, there is there is a, a special subgroup of patients, especially that they are they have a mixed phenotype uh, ALL, and we we treat uh, those patients in a ALL protocol, uh, a high risk of course, and we transplant these patients in in first complete remission, and we uh, uh, use. Uh, fleet uh, uh, and um, uh, drugs uh, uh, against fleet three uh, after after uh, after consolidation before transplantation and we try to do this after transplantation. So, but th these are a special uh, very rare cases. So, uh, in in uh, in more than three hundred patients in our trial. Uh, we have seen only two patients, uh, uh, we, we have seen, uh, uh, sorry, 20 patients with mixed phenotype ALL, but only two have the FLIT3 rearrangement uh, 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 in, in, in at baseline. So it's a, it's a rare situation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Alviti. Another question from audience. Similarly, if there is acute lymphoblastic leukemia with 17 deletion or TP53 mutation. What is your modification? Uh, transplantation in first complete remission and, and, and cross fingers. No, no, no more, no more. Right. Dr. Sekat, your question. You are muted, Dr. Sekat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for your excellent review. Uh, my question is regarding pH positive ALL. In our country, it's very difficult to procure third generation TKI, Pona and Lina due to cost issue. So if I do transplant for pH positive ALL in CR with MRD negativity, is it rational? Uh, well, uh, uh, the the the, prop, the the access of immunotherapy uh, in in pH ALL in first line is common in in many countries. So, no, it's 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 a real situation. No, uh, what we now what we do now uh, in our current protocol is only transplant those patients who are who remain MRD positive at the end of consolidation. Uh, when the patient is MRD positive at the end of induction, we do not do anything. We continue with the study and we make an assessment uh, uh, at the end of consolidation, three to four months from the diagnosis. MRD negative, continue. Chemo uh, and, uh, no, uh, and MRD positive transplantation. That's our way of doing yeah, our problem remains that if our patient relapses on imatinib and desatinib, punatinib usually they cannot access. So yeah. in relapse setting, it's very difficult to manage those patients, even to get them to MRD negative and go to the transplant at that time. Uh, yeah, uh, really, uh, uh, in our in our study that, that began in 2008, 
wisimatinib chemotherapy and transplantation, our uh, the the long term follow up, very long term follow up, is sixty percent. Is not bad. It's really not bad uh, uh, when when a patient can uh, can follow strictly a protocol. Well, uh, ponatinib is not available in any part of the world in first line outside of clinical trial. So we have to manage with imatinib or dasatinib. So in real life, we, we are using uh, attenuated chemotherapy plus uh, imatinib or dasatinib, no more. And then transplant or not, it depends on the policy of each center. But that is real life. The other things, ponatinib, blinatumumab, et cetera, et cetera, are clinical trials. Uh, we have to, to keep this in mind because it, it seems that that uh, we have to give blinatumumab and, and ponatinib to all patients. No, no, no. It's not licensed, any of these drugs. So second, my second question is, uh, do you uh, uh, agree for transplant for every case of ETPALL who are even MRD negative? Uh, transplant for, for ETP ALL, early T cell precursor ALL, ETP ALL. Uh, yeah, uh, ETP. Well, well, we, we transplant all patients in in first complete response. But what we are now uh, now evaluating in our current trial is to use uh, a mixed myeloid and lymphoid trial, and we begin uh, our our the first induction with with a flak ida because uh, in order to to attack the myeloid and lymphoid com uh, compartment that are involved in the in the in the malignant clone and then we use a lymphoid consolidation high high dose methotrexate uh, asparaginase high dose arac and then transplantation to all patients regardless of mrd level Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another question from audience. Do you use notch or P10 mutation status at baseline to decide transplant in CR1, even if MRD has become negative? Yes, yes. Uh, for for PH, uh, for TALL, uh, we, we uh, make uh, also a, a genetic assessment. And in our experience, uh, those patients with RASP10 mutations uh, uh, are at high risk, and we transplant these patients in first complete remission. Uh, the, the notch one uh, mutation in our hands uh, does not have prognostic significance. Mm, uh, so we, we also uh, make the, our decision on the RASP10 mutation, not, not by notch because in our hands has no prognostic significance. You know that the, the prognosis of the, so the supposed good prognosis if, of notch one mutation is not accepted for, by all, all physicians. Thank you. Another question is, do you do a front T315I mutation study to decide whether ponatinib should be the TKI of choice for pH yeah. positive. So do you it do this mutation upfront? No, uh, unfortunately, no systematically. Now we have implemented the, the new protocol that has been that 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 uh, has been initiated uh, one month ago. In this trial, we will do this, but but uh, in the former trial, we didn't uh, make. Uh, mutation analysis at diagnosis. And another related question is, if ponatinib is easily accessible, then will you advise it to be used in place of dasatinib or imatinib? Uh, I, am, I am almost fully convinced that ponatinib will be the drug of choice uh, in the near years uh, uh, for, the, for the pH positive AL. In fact, in fact, it has been it's being submitted to the to the agencies to the FDA and the, and the EMA in Europe uh, in order to be applied for first for for first line ALL. 
based on the results of the of the randomized trial and also the phase two trials from Spain and from the MD Anderson. There are at least three major studies that that are that that are in favor of the use of conatinib in first line. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dipti, your question. Thank you, sir, for nice presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, in uh, SOAK 131A trial, people like more than 70 years, adult ALL patients, they have been given uh, Brina and, you know, along with uh, oral chemotherapy and vincristine pump maintenance. Whether you can use this regimen in uh, more than 60 years, whether it will work, because more than 60 years also we face induction mortality in this subset of patients. Whether it will be useful to use that type of therapy after Brina and Eno, or you prefer low intensity chemotherapy along with Brina and Eno? Uh, which, which, sorry, which uh, which subset of patients are more you referring? Yes. So this trial has been done in more than seventy years. Whether you can use this type of regimen in more than sixty years adult patients? Uh, yeah. Less than uh, seventy. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I, I, I really, you refer to uh, patients older than 60 years, yes? Uh, yes, we, 60 we, which, which, which subtype of ALL? It is a pH negative ALL. B cell precursor ALL? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, all, older patients uh, uh, with ALL uh, now are uh, managed uh, 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 in as assistential, yeah, no, not in clinical trials, are uh, uh, with attenuated chemotherapy uh, in induction, avoiding asparaginase, avoiding asparaginase in induction in order to avoid toxicity and, and uh, uh, treatment-related mortality. Once the patient achieves complete response, we introduce intermediate dose of methotrexate, intermediate dose of RAC, and low dose of PEC asparaginase. In consolidation, when the patient uh, achieves uh, is in complete response and in a good uh, uh, healthy status. That's our, our view because we cannot use uh, upfront any, any immunotherapy outside clinical trials. So that, that's uh, how we manage older patients with uh, ALL. My uh, second question, sir. In uh, younger adults, young adults at frontline regimen, do you like to use, uh, in a high-risk patient, do you want to use Brina and, you know, at the same time with chemotherapy or at sequentially? At what yeah, uh, point of time? Yeah, uh, uh, in the trials uh, with blinatumumab for young patients, it has been administered uh, either concomitant with chemo or intercalated with cycles of chemo. Better in this latter way. So uh, uh, the, the objective of many trials has been to substitute some cytotoxic cycles of chemotherapy by, by blinatumumab. This is uh, the main objective, reducing the, the amount of chemotherapy and reducing the toxicity, and then substituting uh, for uh, blinatumumab that has a less toxic profile. That's, that's the, the basis of many trials, but, but really other trials have, give, have given blinatumumab after the induction. Others have given in the preface Combine it just with, with prednisone and, and triple intrathecal therapy. So the way of, give, of combining blinatumumab and chemotherapy uh, in young people is uh, really unknown. We don't know how to do. We, we will begin in, in Europe uh, uh, one phase three trial in which we will include blinatumumab in induction and in consolidation, in, the, in consolidation, substituting uh, some cytotoxic uh, chemotherapies, and really 
uh, uh, in order and compare with the standard of care uh, therapy. So this trial, I hope, will will begin uh, soon in in less than one year. Well, it's my last question, sir. I want to know whether you have to uh, estimate MRD very frequently in adult ALA or it is same like pediatric uh, population at the uh, end of induction and at the in, uh, end of uh, early consolidation. Do you want to increase the MRD estimation more in adult ALA because its prognosis is poor? Well, uh, we, we assess uh, MRD by, uh, by next generation flow cytometry because it's, it's easy, uh, it's uh, very well automatized and, and really uh, it has been in our hands very, very useful. And we uh, use after induction and after consolidation. And we have these two points as the decisory two points. So those patients who have MRD negativity after induction and after consolidation are not transplanted. And those patients who have MRD positivity uh, at, at the end of consolidation uh, are submitted to transplantation. The, this is the, 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 the situation, the current situation. But we have now uh, been, been uh, so strict uh, in the MRD level. So, we, we now, uh, the requirements are less than 1 to 10 to minus 4 in after induction and 1 to 10 to minus 5 after consolidation. If the patient reaches these two requ requisites, this, this patient will not be transplanted. The remaining patients will be transplanted. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have questions from our colleagues from Myanmar. Uh, one of you can ask the question and then the other one. Please go ahead. Uh, so thank you for the excellent talk. My question is regarding choice of treatment options in relaxed setting. Which patterns you consider in choosing CAR-T, Blena, and I know? And how do you choose those? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, treatment options in relaxed settings. Choice of treatment options. Uh, which factors you consider in choosing CARDI, I know to zoom at and plan to move at? So which how do you, yeah, I, I will just explain in the question. Uh, how do you select between I know to zoom at, plan to move at, and CARDI in adult well, Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. I, I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, the uh, we, we choose... Uh, uh, blinatumumab for patients who relapse after transplantation. Uh, for, for patients who uh, relapse uh, before transplantation or not being transplanted, we use mm -hmm. inotuzumab in first, uh, uh, as first uh, choice because uh, we think that, that inotuzumab is more powerful than, than blinatumumab. Uh, and we use Blina after transplantation in order to avoid, as in, if possible, the, the risk of VOD. CARTIS. CARTIS uh, in Spain are used for relapses after transplantation, first relapse, or second relapse in patients uh, who are not previously trans any any second relapse or first relapse after transplantation. But uh, only uh, uh, only uh, in clinical trials for patients who are uh, older than uh, than 25 years, because we have only licensed um, uh, Kim Raya, so TISA cell uh, for uh, treatment in Spain. We are now in the process of licensing of Tecartus that will uh, go uh, the possibility to treat any adult. But up to now, we can treat CARTs only patients before 25 years old. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Dr. Thanda? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for your excellent talk. Um, we have 
Well, uh, most of the, according to your talk, I've learned a lot, and we have, um, uh, we almost all the targeted in therapies are not available in our country. Uh, apart from, uh, we have Ferdoxymab, and, and, but we have uh, Venetoclast, and there we can manage to get the Tarantimumab. So I, I like to learn from your experience or from your opinion regarding using this in, this agents in ELL? Well, uh, I think that, that Benetoclax has, uh, has a role uh, uh, in relapsed refractory ALL, uh, either in T yes, or B cell yes. precursor ALL. Uh, really, uh, we, we, use, uh, we use Benetoclax uh, in combination uh, with being Christine and steroids. Uh, in treatment of uh, relapsed refractory ALL uh, uh, in, in patients really mm -hmm. who uh, have failed to the immunotherapy in case of B-cell precursor ALL. Our first choice uh, after relapse is in B-cell precursor ALL is Blina or Ino. But if the patient uh, mm -hmm. subsequent relapses and is not candidate to CAR-T, we use Venetoclax in combination uh, with being Christine and steroids. For TALL, uh, uh, we try to use first Nelarabin uh, because it's licensed mm -hmm. uh, for relapse, and then Venetoclax with being Christine and steroids. This is our, mm -hmm. the place of, of Venetoclax in our account in our setting is second or subsequent relapse, not first relapse. Not first relapse. Thank you, sir. And my another question is, uh, should we need to demonstrate, uh, uh, should we need to need to demonstrate any BCL2 dysregulation when we, when we consider venetoclas? Uh, no, no, no. We, BCL2 we, dysregulation, no, no, no we, need to. We, we we don't we don't uh, we don't analyze this. Uh, we give uh, Benetoclax uh, when when the patient uh, has no option of immunotherapy or uh, or uh, or nelarabine. No, we don't uh, evaluate the, the status of BCL two. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Couple of questions from the audience. One is related to in a high risk ALL. Do you recommend three monthly MRD monitoring, even if it has become negative? Uh, so uh, uh, we we in patients who are uh, uh, induction and consolidation MRD negative, we continue monitoring the the MRD during maintenance every three months uh, up to the end of therapy. Then uh, we uh, make uh, MRD uh, monitoring less less frequently, uh, really uh, up to every four to six months in the first year, every uh, every six months or later in the second year. It depends on the on the, the on, on the on the money because at the end because uh, it's it's expensive to make an intensive monitoration uh, once the therapy has been completed. It's, that's, that's the real life. So is it only for high-risk patients or all patients? All patients, all patients. The other question is, do you use any antifungal as a prophylaxis when you are giving Wincristine-based induction? Yes, uh, we, we use... Um, uh, almost, oh. I don't know. We 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 don't we have avoid to use the the salts and we use a needle of fungin uh, in this in these patients. Right. Um, there's a question for pH positive acute undifferentiated leukemia. Your approach. Yeah. Yeah. This is really uh, is is really. Uh, uh, very very rare disease. Uh, uh, really, it's 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 really uh, 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 in the spectrum of mixed phenotype ALL or 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 really in the spectrum of these uh, stem cell leukemias. Uh, yeah, really, is very a very 
uh, unusual question, but we treat as pH positive ALL in any case because we have one, one marker <laughs> for, for following the, the, the therapy. But really, it's an extremely unusual uh, ALL. Right, sir. Another question is for pH positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia. When you're using TKIs, can you skip L asparaginase? Uh, no, no, uh, no, because in our first trial, in our first trial with uh, with uh, imatinib uh, and, and a standard chemo, including asparaginase, uh, we uh, in in our first patients included there were four deaths for uh, hepatic insufficiency, and we have really fear uh, to combine uh, asparaginase and TKI. So we don't use asparaginase uh, in any situation uh, for pH positive ALL. I am aware that some groups are using asparaginase in consolidation uh, combined with TKI, but, but most groups do not use uh, uh, asparaginase in pH positive ALL. Thank you, sir. Another question related to L asparaginase E. Which are the toxicities following L asparaginase after which you totally abandon L asparaginase and do not continue? Well, uh, in, in adults, in adults, the, the by far the most frequent toxicity is liver toxicity. Really, uh, the, the frequency of liver toxicity uh, is as high as 30% in our hands. Uh, the second is thrombosis. Thrombosis, but it's less than, 20, than 10%. Uh, uh, allergy is, is not frequent, really, in adults. Uh, and, and other toxicities, pancreatitis is 12%, uh, 12, sorry, 2%, sorry, 2% in our series. And uh, metabolic toxicities, of course, are high. Hypertriglyceridemia is high. Uh, hyperglycemia is is quite high, but there are steroids also. But really, the most important is hepatic toxicity by far. And will you discontinue L asparaginase permanently if these no. complications are not? No, 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 no. When hepatotoxicity is solved, uh, we reintroduce uh, asparaginase. Uh, half those in the in the in the next cycle and full those in the next subsequent cycle no no we we do not uh, interrupt permanently asparaginase and for pancreatitis and intracranial thrombosis well uh, for intracranial thrombosis yes uh, for pancreatitis it depends if there is a biologic pancreatitis only we reintroduce asparaginase with caution in subsequent cycles. When there is a clinical pancreatitis, we stop definitively. Thank you. Other question is for using inotuzumab in a relapsed setting, is it mandatory to document CD22 positivity? Uh, no, no, uh, no uh, well, we man it's mandatory to assess the, the CD22 uh, positivity, but the level doesn't matter. Right. I think that was the last question from the audience. Uh, any question from the faculty present here? Nothing. So in that case, thank you very much. You have been absolutely authoritative, very patient. Almost for two hours, you have discussed and answered all the questions and very, very impressive way. Your talk, and your competence to answer all these questions. Some of these were really controversial uh, questions and you answer them well, so beautifully, so convincingly, speaks volumes about your experience in handling these situations. And I think the patients will benefit on this side of the world because of your this uh, session which you had with us. We are grateful to you. Thank you for giving the opportunity of, of sharing with you. Uh, there are uh, important questions and there are questions that we have in our daily practice. So it's, it's, it's clear that we have enriched both uh, from, from this session. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank all the discussants here.
I thank our sponsors, Pfizer, and the event management team from uh, this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.